the Thoughty OT podcast. Look, looking back in hindsight, um, sort of listing off some kind of red flags mm. for, what, for what happened for you when, when you're approaching a burnout. Sure. I knew that autistic burnout was applicable to me the first thing when I finally managed to sit down and research autism. Mm -hmm. I did not know how to take breaks. I always overexerted myself and said yes to everything and really rarely had any kind of recharge time. At school, I was in quite a stressful environment and there was so much work to do. I was there for many, many hours a day and I was ill all the time. I was ill maybe for two weeks, then I'd be back in school for three weeks then I'd be ill for two weeks. This was diagnosed as psychosomatic, and it was really, <laughs> it was, it was, but but it was to the point where they thought I had tuberculosis because it, I had such bad illness, but it was always psychosomatic, but never investigated further. Yeah. Then going into Ten uni, <laughs> sorry. So it it tends to be something that a lot of women get labelled with, um, like things like BPD and borderline and it's like. <laughs> All these, all these other things, everything but autism. Mm -hmm. And the psychosomatic component is literally just like you think something and therefore you feel it and it happens. Yeah. It's, um... it's very funny to me, retrospectively, because you can either laugh or you can cry. So <laughs> might as well laugh, right? Then going into uni, I struggled massively with my mental health and was only able to work for about three and a half day of hours per day yeah. tops the only thing that really helped was was being outside so I did a lot of volunteering and through that I met some awesome people and started to learn how to talk about mental health through them and I'm so grateful for all the vocabulary they introduced me to once I recognized what chronic burnout was it was one of the main reasons I pursued getting my diagnosis because I just wanted a reason for why my brain and body felt so disconnected. Mm. The brain and body, the, it's all connected. It's all one thing. It's not separate. And so I figured there must be some sort of reason behind this. And I wanted to figure out why my energy levels were so spiky. Why when, when I was interested in something and it was amazing, I felt like I could live and breathe and eat just that thing I was interested in. But like Mr. Robot, just like type of coding for hours and hours and <laughs> making my gardening plans. Yes. Think, think, thinking about advocacy, just oh, making spreadsheets, just having a great time. But um, yeah, so it all made sense after that. And I've really been working on understanding my needs, my capability and capacity. Cap capability and capacity, they're two different words. Capability is, oh, do you know how to bake a cupcake? And capacity is how big is your oven? Yeah. So those are really important distinctions because I was capable of doing all the work that I wanted to do, but I did not have capacity. And so understanding that distinction was, was really, really important for me and ultimately enabled me to join in the workplace. I'm able to work full time, which is a massive privilege and something that gives me so much joy, but I'm still sort of, I've still been teetering on the edge of that burnout and yeah. it's something that I want to put a stop to. I've generally just confused being driven with overworking. And that's a strong, strong no. Overworking. Just, there's, there's such a societal trend towards that at the moment though. It's mm -hmm. like, it's almost like it's glorified. Like, um, and I think it's, it's really important, you know, when you were talking about like capacity, um, you know, you, you could you could probably stuff a lot of cookie dough or I don't know what, what would you say muffin muffin dough cupcakes. into yeah cupcake cupcake dough into the oven and just absolutely ram it full and come out with this this huge Minecraft esque blob of cupcake, but that doesn't mean that it's a good cupcake. No, um, like you... and, and you can't eat that much cupcake for all the love in the world. I love cupcakes. <laughs> There's not that many that I want to eat. After a while, they're all going to start tasting bland. Can you see where I'm going with this metaphor? Yeah. yeah. The lack of joy from overworking creates is, is palpable. Yeah. I don't know. It's. I definitely agree that there is a societal trend toward this, and I completely blindly accepted it. Hmm. Despite the fact that in my current workplace, I've got 
awesome workplace adjustments. I've got a really supportive and calm working environment. But I was always chasing the dopamine. I always wanted to do a bit, a bit more here, a bit more there, whatever made me feel helpful or whatever I felt was valuable. But if you combine that with all the external stuff that happens outside of work, recently for me, it's been pretty for long. The last year has been difficult. I've, yeah. Yeah. There's been lots it's of it's weird, isn't it? Like in, in the mornings when you're getting ready for like a work day, it's like, for some reason, like you see perhaps your battery, I don't know, 90% because you had a bad night's sleep or something. And so you're like, oh, cool. I've got 90% of energy to use. You use that entire amount of energy for for your working day and you're like, oh, I'm on 5%. You know, I've got to get home and then something happens. And then you forget that you've got a social event. And then it's mm-hmm. like, you, you don't have the energy to do that kind of stuff. And you have to spend more energy for like reorganizing things and so it's kind of yeah. like you just run your battery completely battery, dry. battery free without giving you any like wiggle room hey up youtube hope you have enjoyed this podcast clip so far and if you have why not check out the full episode which you can find on my youtube channel or on other streaming services like google apple um spotify you can find it pretty much anywhere you want to if you have enjoyed this make sure to like subscribe drop a comment down below even if it's something simple like sending me a heart or an emoji it really really does help me with the algorithm all of my links to my socials like my daily instagram blog posts are down in the description but other than that i hope you enjoy the rest of this clip and that battery if you've got that five percent i was neglecting to realize that i still need some battery to recover I still need battery to clean up my house. I need to make myself dinner. Even something like going for a walk is going to take some of that battery and I need that. Mm. And so I came to this this breakthrough, which was very helpful. In the words of Taylor Swift, hi, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. Yeah. Because I recognize that I am making those choices of running my battery dry and struggling to recognize when I need to rest. I was overdoing activities like the rest. I go into the forest. I'd be there for half an hour and feel amazing. So I continued walking for another hour and a half until it was dark. And then I realized I'm in the middle of a forest with my dog. (laughs) I don't have a flashlight. I don't have dinner waiting for me at home. Trying to min max resting. (laughs) Yeah. And I also don't have any groceries. So Obviously, that's going to be a problem, and that's where I needed to genuinely reevaluate my relationship to my energy and my capability and capacity properly. Hey, up! Just popping on to say thank you for listening to this podcast this far. If you could do me a real solid, please make sure to rate the podcast if you're on a podcasting streaming service, and do all that like, subscribe, comment stuff on YouTube. Damn, even send a heart in the comments if you don't feel like typing. Make sure to check out my link tree, which is always down below in the description, or head over to my Instagram page at thomashenleyuk for daily blogs, podcast updates, and weekly lives. This podcast is sponsored by my favorite noise cancelling, noise reducing earbuds that you can adjust the volume on. Really, really great thing. They're called D-Buds, and you can find the affiliate link down in the description of this podcast for a 15% off discount. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the rest of the podcast. That's all from me. I think there was something that you were saying about, um, you know, your, your school time, sort of having three weeks of doing loads and then having two weeks where you're sick. I think that's that's been... It was really interesting because the, the previous podcast, um, it's not come out yet because I've been burnt out and so behind on things um <laughs> ironic yeah ironic for the the topic of the podcast i'm not i'm not totally on top of it yet but i'm trying um but uh, we were talking about how very much my my experience of life is like a roller coaster i have like peaks which are like really great and i'm doing so much and then i have absolute just tail off drops where I, where i just you know, I, I can't function and I need supports and things like that. And I think that's a really good analogy for like what happens when you just 
lean into that that whole burnout thing mm. you just get so overexcited with the amount of energy that you've got and just burn for it all and then not give yourself enough and things start to fall apart and then you you have a I you love, have a, a burnout i love the analogy of a roller coaster because that is so true to my own experience and i'm, I'm just sick of it i don't want to be going up and down anymore i'm just mm. tired i'm so tired and i know that i need to be here for a long time and a good time and that's part of my recovery journey has been slowing down even though i really don't want to because i love i love all the things that i do Hard but it's necessary <laughs> and my goal for 2023 has been to have a boring year because I just, I just need to slow down and figure things out. And I've been setting myself up for success and learning what all my different red flags are for approaching, approaching mm. that burnout. And it's been incredibly invaluable. 